Welcome to another episode of Grubmasters. I'm John, this is Carl, and today we're gonna do chicken stew. Carl, what goes into this chicken stew? Well, obviously chicken, for starters. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't be chicken stew. Check. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have some red skin potatoes. You know I love those because we don't have to peel them, we just wash them. We have baby carrots. They're not baby at all, but they're small, ready to go uh, into no peeling, no cutting. Right. Now, the, the potatoes, we had those in water. We dumped those off just before we started recording. Yes. You're going to want to keep those in water so they don't turn that kind of nasty brown color. Correct. And prep them ahead at home. Yeah, if absolutely. you're heading out into the woods and uh, stick them in a cooler, you'll be great. Uh, chopped up onion uh, that we have. Uh, that's about two onions. And then I have about about four cloves of garlic ready to go because you got to have some garlic, garlic in there to help flavor it up. When we're browning the chicken, we're going to use a little bit of oil uh, to get that going. We're using chicken thighs, so they've got a little bit of fat on them, so it should help us a little bit. Uh, we're going to use some canned vegetables. We're going to be using a 14-inch deep Dutch oven today. We've got some people coming over. We want to have a good hearty stew. So I, I checked in my bin. I've got some corn. I've got some uh, mixed vegetables. Whatever you have for vegetables, you can use frozen vegetables, uh, whatever strikes your fancy. Um, before we stick the uh, chicken into the Dutch oven to brown it, we're going to use some just general all-purpose flour uh, for that. We're going to add some water later on uh, to give it some broth. Uh, we're going to use some bouillon cubes. We've got some softer ones here. They tend to dissolve a little quicker and work better. Uh, later on, we're going to want to thicken this up. Wondra, my uh, my grandmother, God rest her soul, lived to 101, but she swore by this stuff. Uh, and it's a great, it's a refined flour. Might have been part of her longevity secret, actually, so we're not going to mess with that. Yeah, living to 101 on Wondra. Little plug for a gold medal. I could have used cornstarch, uh, but then we would have had to whisk it, whisked it in cold water, got it all ready. This works just as well. Uh, we'll be able to flour it in there. Uh, we may need this as we're putting stuff in. And John, why don't you talk about some of the seasonings that we're going to use today? Yeah, so we just have some uh, basic seasoned salt. Um, that's always great on chicken. Um, rosemary, you got to have the rosemary on chicken. Um, and then we've got a bay leaf that we'll, a couple, yeah, a couple of bay leaves because of the size, and we'll pull those out when we're all done. Um, and then um, thyme leaves. So we have time. We have time. We have time. Plenty of time. So. All right. Maybe a little salt and pepper if we need it. So Yeah, uh, so we'll kind of doctor it up at the end. We'll give it a few tastes and we'll adjust as necessary. All right, so that's a good amount of oil. We're going to let that come up to temp and then we're going to um, we're going to prepare our chicken. So it's looking like our Dutch oven is up to temperature. Uh, John, why don't we start dusting some of that uh, chicken thigh chopped up uh, in the flour. Did some smaller pieces, you know, maybe an inch by an inch, half inch thick. Figuring that uh, it's going to be cooking for a little while in that, in that broth and all that we're going to get going there. Again, bite size. You don't want to have the piece the size of your head. That's not good for anybody. Let's see how that does, John. That sounds good. We'll try to get a good sear on each side. I'm going to try to keep them together so I know as John's putting them in which vintage of... Uh, chickens there so I can gauge when it's going to be ready to be flipped. Okay, so we're going to work these in batches. We're going to brown each side, flip them from time to time, make sure we get a nice brown on them. The first batch went into the bowl. The second one is just finished up now, so we're actually yep. going to throw that chicken back in there. We added some extra heat underneath. And John, what I'm going to do is you can hold this. I'm going to go get, keep stirring this. I'm going to go get some water. So we like to always keep a pot of water going. It just helps with cleanup. And then uh, in this case, we're ready to go with some hot water. So we're not just cooling this chicken down. All right, the water. So what do you say? That's just enough water to cover the chicken? Yeah, but I think we probably need a little bit more. Well, you know what? Let's put our vegetables in and see and where we'll it goes. You can it. always add more. Right. We can always fine tune. All right, so everybody in the swimming pool here, got our red skin potatoes, got our carrots, one straggler there. Got them. Onions, last but not least, the garlic. Yeah, let's, uh, let's add our bay leaves. Let's do uh, three of those. We'll start off with uh, two chicken bouillon. 
These are larger, softer. And the rosemary. It's a big sprinkle. Yep. And seasoning salt. And the thyme leaves. Salt and pepper. Won't go too heavy with the salt because, of course, we had the bouillon. This will evaporate off a little bit right. as we're doing this. So. so just a little bit over all of our ingredients, and then we yeah. know that as that cooks down. And we've got a good salt. inch and a half uh, from the uh, rim of the pot, so we know we're not going to boil over yeah. or anything. Boiling over onto charcoal is not fun. So, yeah. All right, so uh, this is basically a game of uh, maintaining our bottom heat and just simmering this for a while. Yeah. Our potatoes are nice and tender, as well as our carrots. So uh, we drained off uh, three cans of veggies, and uh, we'll dump them in. Need to get the, the proper uh, can good stance here. <laughs> Take that for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that come up to temp. Actually, maybe we can even start adding some of our uh, Wondra right in here. Wanna do a little thickener yeah, now? Bing. You tell me when, you're the expert on the Wondra. So we can always add a little bit more. All right, let's try there. The great thing about the Wondra is you're not going to get the lumps that you would get if you just use flour. So we're going to put the lid back on this. This is so good with a piece of bread too. Just that, oh God, I love the broth almost more than the stew. Carl, I can wait no longer. All right, let me pop the lid off. Oh, John. So another reason why you want to leave yourself about an inch of room is you're going to have to move this someplace likely. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so look at this. Oh, oh it's beautifully thickened up. Potatoes and, and just starting to break apart a little bit there. We purposely made this brothy. I mean, we like the broth. So what? No chicken? No. Oh, there we go. I'm saving I got it a all piece. for me. All right. Cheers. cheers. It's going to be hot. Can taste that thyme. Yep, and the chicken thighs are delicious in this because it's so, it's just so tender. I mean, there's no yep. chew, there's no rubber effect here. It's all together, it hasn't disintegrated. Um, you put your spoon to it and it comes right apart and I'm using mm. a plastic spoon. The vegetables are perfectly done. You know, they're they're nice, they, they got a little mouth feel but they're not, they're not mush and they're not crunchy. This is just a winning dish. So again, we hope we've inspired you to uh, you know, think outside the box. Yep. Everybody does the beef stew, chicken yep. stew. Don't be afraid to do a chicken stew. It's just absolutely delicious. Um, Carl, thanks for sharing the recipe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.